Welcome to Fireside Jets. My name is Alex with my host here, Ryan Moran. Today we're taking a look at a dynamic duo of receivers for the Jets. Garrett Wilson, rookie, and Elijah Moore. Of course, you know, we'll talk about Corey Davis, what he did last year, what we need from him to, need for him to do this year. But these two guys, man, these two receivers have the potential to be something special. Garrett Wilson, really shifty, agile, a, ph a phenomenal receiver coming out of college, an amazing route runner. We'll talk about that. I'll, we'll throw in some clips Throughout the videos, you can take a look at, at those two guys as well. Elijah Moore coming off a phenomenal season. Um, rookie campaign made a really big impact, especially with some injuries there. He did really good with Mike White. Um, and, and that's really exciting to see a, a receiver who's dominating with backup quarterbacks. Now, not, not even with Zach Wilson on the field. So I'm excited to break into these two players and see what they have to offer and why they could be such a dynamic duo. But before we do, Ryan, how are you, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm all good, Alex. Thanks. And uh, excited to really just talk about these two guys who have Jets fans very excited about the future of this offense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, we'll dive into Elijah Moore first because he has the year of experience. You know, we'll talk about him, what he's going to offer this team. Um, Elijah Moore, what is he, 22 years old. He's a, He can barely drink alcohol, 5'10", 178 pounds. Obviously, 34th overall pick last year. Uh, put together a pretty solid campaign. 538 yards, five touchdowns, um, a 55.8% catch rate. Would like to see that go up a little bit more. But altogether, no fumbles. Didn't really do anything that would you know hurt the team offensively. He only added substantial value, especially from that slot uh, spot. And he really, he really came out and made some amazing plays as a route runner getting open. And even though opposing defenses knew that Mike White and, you know, not even Mike White, but rather Elijah Moore was their primary receiver when Corey Davis went down, they couldn't stop him. And that's a sign of a great receiver when you, everybody knows the ball's going to you, but they still can't stop you. So Ryan, you know, when you're looking at Elijah Moore, what he's going to accomplish this upcoming season, what you want him to do, what, what kind of steps forward do you think you'd like to see him take? Absolutely. I think, Better consistency to start the year. I think, you know, availability with him is going to be huge. You know, missing some time last summer. You know, I think really when you look at the beginning of the regular season, like Zach and Corey Davis were really in rhythm. You know, that was Zach's go-to guy the first, you know, month or so of the season before he got hurt. So I think with Elijah just being on the field is really everything. This guy has all the ability. Like you said, it was surprising he was still available when the Jets got him when they did a year ago. This is a guy with speed and quickness as a great, he's a great route runner, you know, before he gets the ball in his hands. And now when he gets the ball in his hands, he is dynamic after the catch, similar to Garrett Wilson, of course. And they do it a little bit differently, which I like. We'll get into Garrett and what he can do, but with Elijah, I think a little bit more tackle breaking ability is kind of added, you know, some strength. Um, he's got that four, three speed. He can win down the field. He, he's relatively both of these guys. They complement one another and there's a multitude of things that they can really provide. Absolutely. So when you're looking at Elijah Moore and really where he dominates on the football field last year, a lot of his yardage came in two specific categories deep. So 20 plus yards downfield made a lot of plays, 193 yards and a touchdown. But the most of his action came from the 10 to 19 yard uh, range on the football field. He had 221 yards and three touchdowns. Um, overall, he was just an absolute stud right there. So the intermediate passing game is where he really, really shined. Um, now, the interesting thing is Garrett Wilson also kind of has a lot of uh, capabilities in that area, too. You know, he can do stuff on line of scrimmage. He can also do stuff downfield. But I wonder if Elijah Moore ends up in this, you know, slot role moving forward. So last year, um, he didn't actually spend a ton of time in the slot. Most of it came out wide. So 70.8% of his pass snaps came out wide and 283 came in the slot. So 93 snaps in the slot, 233 out wide, um, which is interesting, right? Because like, he definitely fits that slot profile, but he's capable of winning on the outside. He has some good physicality, um, definitely a great run, route runner and some good speed. Um, I wonder if Garrett Wilson's presence is going to push him more into the slot or if Garrett Wilson ends up playing in the slot himself, right? So like, let's take a look at his snap count. Um, so Garrett Wilson last year, let's take a look. He ended up playing, what, 595 total snaps, 107, 107 of them in the slot. So, you know, not the most, a sixth of his uh, of reps came in the slot and kind of similar to Elijah Moore. He also spent more time outside. So, you know, in your opinion, which one of these guys gets pushed into the slot? Do you think maybe they'll just be interchangeable depending on the, on the lineup or, you know, what they're trying to do on offense, but I, either of those guys can do it. And, and I think, you know, Elijah Moore with his size um, probably fits better in the slot, but maybe they're like, you know, he looks so good out wide. Why do we want to mess with something that's not broken? Uh, what do you think about that concept? It's very interesting, and I'm curious to see what Michael Floor ends up doing. He's such an innovator with a creative mind. 
I, I think what you kind of just touched up on there last, like I think it's going to be week to week. It's going to be interchangeable. They're going to try and keep defenses off balance with the skill sets both of these guys have. You touched up on it. In 2020, Elijah's junior year at Ole Miss and Garrett's sophomore year at Ohio State, they were really both predominantly slot receivers. And then last year, Garrett's junior season at Ohio State, Elijah's rookie year with the Jets, they were both really back on the outside more. So they offer you that experience, the production from both positions. They both have that, you know, even Garrett, like, can play in the slot. He, he's not necessarily the biggest, like, Corey Davis, so to speak. You know, they both have that quickness, that route running ability, and – I think Michael Ford is going to try and just, you know, get these guys in the best position to win and get the ball in their hands, whether that's out wide or in the slot. I even think with Corey Davis's ability as a run blocker at times, they can really try and get creative and use him as like an extension of a tight end. You know, he's statistically one of the better run blocking receivers in the game. So I think even some instances they could look to try and get him in line, you know, kind of as a, you know, Alan Lazard, Robert Woods type of player where, you know, you're counting on this guy to just help as a blocker, open things up off play action. And ultimately, I think all three of the Jets receivers are interchangeable. And with more and Wilson, I think you're going to see really just, you know, their utilization across the formation, whether that's out wide at the X Z or in the slot. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Corey Davis, like you said, good run blocker. Um, I wonder if that's kind of how they get him involved. You know, of course, you got Jeremy Ruckert now. Um, some good tight ends there, and those guys, you know, will be able to help at the second level, especially with screen passes. Um, I'd love to see Elijah Moore. He didn't really get many opportunities catching passes behind the line of scrimmage in terms of screens or even just in the zero to five range. So I wonder if they try to get him more involved in that area, just get him out wide, let him use his ability after the catch. Garrett Wilson, similarly, um, you know, he's also extremely shifty. So last year, let's take a look at Garrett Wilson, what he did for Ohio State. Put up 1,058 yards, 12 total touchdowns, 15.1 yards per catch. Hit a 70% catch rate, which obviously is phenomenal. The guy doesn't drop the pass, uh, drop passes very often. Um, he had six drops, a 7.9% drop rate. So, you know, there are some receivers in this past draft class that had better numbers in that area. But, you know, once you get to the NFL, they'll figure out how to how to eliminate those, uh, those problems and, you know, what really needs to happen. Here's, his hand size is well above average in the 87th percentile, 9.88 inches. So it's not like he has small hands and he's dropping the passes because of that. It's more probably based on fundamentals and just something that he's doing wrong. Maybe he's taking his eyes off the ball. Again, six drops, not the end of the world. That's something to build on. Um, his 40-yard dash, 90th percentile, 438. The guy's got blazing speed. Um, vertical jump, 36 inches, 10, point, uh, 10 feet, 3 inches on the broad jump. He did not bench press and he did not three cone. And I imagine he didn't bench press because he's not known for his physicality. That's probably his biggest weakness is his play strength. Um, so I wonder, you know, if they're going to use him out wide against press coverage um, or even in the slot, press coverage is probably going to be his biggest problem um, out of the gate. He's got to get a bit stronger. Um, but against zone coverage, against off ball corners, like, you know, you know, giving them that little bit of cushion, he's going to kill corners that are giving him cushion. If you want to stop Garrett Wilson, your best bet is playing press coverage on him, jamming him at the line of scrimmage and using uh, a more a more physical corner strength to, you know, limit him. Um, Of course, then you have to worry about Elijah Moore and Corey Davis. So, you know, you have two other receivers who are incredibly difficult to beat. Um, But, you know, I guess, I guess like when you're going into this 2022 season, do you think he's going to be going up against mostly CV3s? Do you think the teams are going to look at Garrett Wilson and say, hey, this is a guy we got to allocate, you know, our top gun against? Or are you thinking like, who, how would you rank, I guess, these three uh, wide receivers in terms of one, two, and three, the best to the worst at this point, like for if you're an opposing defensive coordinator? That's a great question. I would think in order, I don't know if you would agree or not, I would say Moore is probably the top one just with his experience, his explosiveness. He's extremely talented. You, you said just how reliable – of a, you know, hands pass catcher football he is, you know, and his ability to separate with his routes. I think Wilson would probably have to be second, just when you factor in like, he's a big play, you know, waiting to happen, whether it's with his vertical ability is four, three speed, or like you said, you really wouldn't expect it just based on his height and weight. But when you factor in his, his vertical, um, just his hand size, you know, in contest catch situations, um, whether that's in the red zone or over the middle of the field, like, He's extremely dynamic in that regard. And I, I think Corey Davis is a really good third option to have. And I think he will really be poised for more success this year. You know, I think like I remember going into week two last year, all the talk was like JC Jackson's just going to be on him the whole game. And that was one of his tougher games. So I think, you know, regardless of which way it does shake out, I don't know if you would agree with the way I had them ordered there, but I think, you know, whoever is getting those, you know, matchups against teams, third corners is def definitely, you know, in a position to succeed.
Absolutely. Look, having Corey Davis as your third option is not a bad thing. He was he was great when AJ Brown was on the field, you know, as the number two option. He's just not a bona fide number one receiver, in my opinion. All my Jets friends were like, no, he's gonna be great. He's gonna be, you know, number one, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, look, I like Corey Davis, but he's a great number two. He's a great option to have against an opposing team's CB2, not their CB1, because he gets locked down against the Jalen Ramseys of the world. They're, he's just not good enough. But um, with that being said, now you have Elijah Moore, extremely shifty, and then you have Garrett Wilson on top of it, who's capable of breaking a ton of tackles. And he's so – like I was just watching some clips of him, and, and he just he, – he'll be looking left, and he'll make a move the other direction with someone coming at him. And like they're like, wait, you weren't even looking at me. How did you know I was there? He just jukes people out of their shoes. He gives me like those, you know, Canarius Tony vibes with when he has the ball in his hands. Like he's just on stops on a dime, changes direction. He can make plays. He can break tackles. He just his center of gravity is phenomenal. Um, last year he ranked well in college, the senior year, ranked eleventh um, in missed tackles force with nineteen. So he definitely is known for his missed tackle, you know, forcing missed tackles. Uh, but I do think that, like him improving his play strength will be the biggest you know, hurdle for him to overcome early in his career, but that doesn't mean, you know, he won't do it. He's super young. What is he? Six foot, um, probably a little bit lighter, 184 pounds. So he's really, really small for a guy at six foot, 184 pounds. I mean, he could probably get up to 190, even maybe 195, probably like 190. He wouldn't lose any of his speed, but he got a little bit more, uh, get a little bit more size to his frame, a little bit more muscle mass, you know, six, seven pounds of muscle at six foot. I think that would do him well against aggressive corners, um, but like the Jets this year, I mean, Zach Wilson has all the weapons in the world. This is his opportunity to really take a step forward. There's no excuse, right? Your offensive line, we talked about that a little bit yesterday with Makai Becton, George Font. Um, you have some really great guys, Lakin Tomlinson, um, you know, Greg Van Roten is gone, thank God, Connor McGovern, Elijah Vera Tucker. You have a phenomenal group of players here that have so much potential. Um, you have a good tight ends, good receivers. This is, and then you have a great play caller in LaFleur. You know, this is, <laughs> you guys have it all right now. This is your chance. And Zach Wilson's the key, right? He's the catalyst to making this team move forward. He's the catalyst for the developmental step you guys need to see this year. Um, but, you know, let's let's talk about that for one second. What do you think Zach Wilson's biggest problem is going to be in his second season? Where do you see him struggling the most? Or what is his biggest hurdle right now? Because last year it just seemed to be he was taking unnecessary risks. He would be throwing the ball up aimlessly. It would be floating up there. Um, he wasn't decisive with his throws. He was skipping the ball off the ground a couple of, on a couple of uh, screen swing passes. Uh, what do you think that is his biggest weakness like that he has to overcome as a sophomore? It's a great question. I think the last five games he really improved with regard to no interceptions. I mean, I think most of his turnovers really came in that first matchup against Belichick early in the season, which you almost expect Belichick to do to rookie quarterbacks. I think – with Zach, the main thing is just sharing up his accuracy. And, you know, he's obviously put on all this weight that's been talked about yesterday. He plans on playing the season at 10 pounds heavier, which I think from a dirty durability standpoint, you know, certainly helps him. I just think overall it's the big plays that you want to see. I think back to the Titans game, like his ability to kind of create out of the pocket, you know, which was kind of tough to do even in those final five games without, you know, Elijah Moore and Corey Davis, despite the fact he didn't throw any interceptions like, there were a lack of big plays, and I think that's you know probably something you're going to want to see more of and something that somebody like Garrett Wilson is going to bring to the table. So I think overall it's just similar, like I said, with Elijah Moore, you know, having the availability week to week is going to be key with Zach, you know, obviously missing time there in the middle of the season and just being more consistent with his throws. I think like you saw in the Buccaneer game, you know, some of those passes he made really high level, you know, tight windows uh, can really fit in there. And, you know, he has the arm strength to do it. So I think with him, it's just going to be more big plays and just consistent accuracy on all three levels of the field. Exactly. And, and you know, that might life wind, if you throw that ball up there, if you're lofting footballs, it's just going to take it, you know, it's going to take and hand deliver it to the other team. So you really got to be careful with that. Um, Zach Wilson, you know, one of like the best deep ball throwers I've ever seen at the collegiate level when he was at BYU, I absolutely loved him because he would just roll out and he would just put balls on a dime, like in the only spot he's got to get it like 60 yards downfield. And it's like, okay, that's translatable to the NFL. Um, the problem is I think like the putting him in a position where the offensive line was bad, his, his, you know, had some injuries there. Like you guys have a good pass protecting offensive line. He's going to have time in the pocket. He's going to be able to roll out. He's going to be able to use his skill set uh, appropriately. He just needs more time. Um, and I think that's what you guys provided him more time and better receivers. And the last two drafts, you guys have absolutely knocked it out of the park. Like the jets have had 
probably the best two drafts I've ever seen. Um, if it pans out like player wise and like scheme fit and everything that you guys needed, it fell perfectly for you. So um, I'm excited to see how the Jets unfold this year. I'm excited to see what Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore can do. I do think that that is a very dynamic duo of receivers, your long-term solution. Um, unfortunately, Elijah Moore, you know, definitely has, doesn't have the fifth year option, but again, like if he's that good, just extend him. You know what I mean? Like you, there's no question about it. You guys have the, the rookie window for your quarterback. You have the money for it. Um, I think he's going to be a phenomenal player for you guys for a very long time. Garrett Wilson has the same potential, uh, but that kind of breaks down those two players. Ryan, any last words on these guys? hundred percent. I mean, you really said it well. I think these guys have Jets fans really excited. I mean, it's been a long time since you had two young, dynamic, big play threats at receiver like this. You know, really, it's been kind of a revolving door with just veterans coming in over the years. And now it's, it's a job well done by Joe Douglas to get these two guys the last two years. Guys with 4-3 speed, like we said, the inside-out flexibility for Michael Floor. Um, you know how innovative and creative a designer, play designer he is and what these guys can, guys can offer you on jet sweeps, uh, orbit motioning, jet motioning. In the screen game, they're very dynamic in different ways. Like we said with Wilson, it's more just the quickness, the shiftiness. He's elusive. Um, Elijah's probably the one just with a little more play strength, like you were saying before. And it's really going to be fun. I mean, this is the beginning of something, you know, with them, with the two of them, I think you're looking at potential, you know, number one wide receivers in both of these guys. And, you know, with more time with LaFleur, with Zach Wilson, and like I said, his arm strength obviously is there and these guys can both win down the field. So hopefully this season is just to start something special with all these guys. Yeah, I, I would imagine it's going to be. So I'm excited to watch. Obviously, these two guys are fun. Um, of course, during this video, there'll be, you know, clips scattered throughout. Uh, so you'll get a chance to kind of look at some of these guys and what they have to offer. But thank you for tuning in to Fireside Jets. We're taking a look at two awesome receivers. Really excited. Even as a Giants fan, I'm hyped to watch these guys. Ryan definitely seems excited to watch these guys. Make sure to like and subscribe below on the YouTube channel. And we'll catch you guys on the next episode.